You own an Infento ePulse motor. You might be familiar with the question how full the battery is. What is the state of charge? If you didn't charge the battery since the last use, will we still be able to drive to the playground and back? Or will we have to push the ride by hand a good part of the way? The solution is to add a small charge indicator panel to our battery. It is a flat electric component that indicates the battery's voltage for some 10 seconds when a button is pushed. The first part of this video will show the most direct way to get your own charge indicator installed. In the second half of this video I will add some background information for those among you that are technically interested. I am pointing out that you do this on your own risk. You should be aware of what you are doing and that Infendo's guarantee will expire when you modify the battery. There is a small potential risk that you somehow create a short circuit, but if you do I can say by my own experience that Infendo's internal battery management system shuts off the current entirely for safety reasons. The battery is like that then, but you can easily reactivate it by plugging it into the charger for a moment. Part 1. The direct way to get it done. Ok, this being said, let's have a look at the parts we need. The charge indicators are standard bits that can be bought inexpensively on eBay or AliExpress. You are free to use a different style than the version that I present here, but what is important to choose the version that matches to our Infanto battery. We need the version for 6S Lithium. Additionally, we need some two T-shaped crimp terminals, like these ones here I bought on Ali in a set of 50 pieces. They are very handy, as they allow us to branch off cables without need to cut nor to solder anything. Finally, we need some double-sided foam tape that will hold the indicator panel in place. We only need some 3 to 4 centimeters. The tools we need are a pair of flat nose pliers to crimp the terminals, a Torx TX10 screwdriver, a 5 mm drill bit or larger to route our wires out of the battery's case, a pair of simple scissors to cut the foam tape, and of course the ePulse battery. Now let's get started. First, remove the four Torx-driven screws that hold the battery case's lid in place. Now find a place where you would like to place the indicator panel and drill a 5mm hole into the battery case's lid. I found the place between the cable connector terminal is well visible, well accessible, but also well protected. When we have done that, we route the indicator's wires through the 5mm hole and attach the indicator panel with a foam tape onto the lid. The next step is easier if we pull the battery entirely out of the plastic casing. We now have to crimp one crimp terminal into each of the red and black wires. It does not really matter which of these many cables you choose, as long as it is one red and one black cable. But I found the thick cables were most suitable and the location was 3 to 4 cm or 1.5 inches away from the battery cells. The crimp terminals cuts into the insulation of the wires when the clamp is being closed with the pliers. You want to make sure you hear the clamps get locked with a slight click sound. Congratulations, you just managed the hardest part. Now we have to crimp the connectors onto the small wires that come from the indicator panel. Bend the soldered ends of the cable around like this and insert the whole cable end including a part of the insulation into the connector. Crimp the connector's end firmly and make sure the cable is held tightly. 
we can now plug the connectors into the terminals. This turns out to be a quite tricky bit. You may need to bend the metal tongue inside the connector back into the center so that it will slide into the slot of the terminal to create the electric connection. Before we are now reassembling the battery case, try out if your indicator panel works. Make sure the lid is put onto the casing in the correct orientation. The raised areas must be on the same side. Store the cables into the battery casing's lid without force. Put the four screws back into place. Congratulations, mission accomplished! Go outside, playing with the kids! Part 2 – Some background information concerning the ePulse battery. The ePulse battery is also called 6S2P lithium battery. Lithium ion is the galvanic type of the battery. This very common battery type can be found in laptops, home appliances and electric vehicles. Don't mix them up with the rock solid but heavy lithium iron phosphate batteries that are being used as solar energy storage in your home. You may have also heard of lithium polymer or LiPo batteries. These have an unbeatable power to weight ratio and are therefore being used in high performance toys such as RC cars, planes, drones and helicopters. Unfortunately their use requires some precaution or they can explode. They should only be stored in discharged state and only in a firetight safe. Speaking of battery storage. The lithium battery of our ePulse kit prefers to be stored for a longer period of time in a partially discharged state, ideally around 50%. So don't charge them after each use, even if this corresponds your sense of order, the battery will lose quicker its capacity then. A lithium ion battery cell has a voltage of nominally 3.7 volts. This voltage is only a nominal value, but not at all a constant one. The cell's voltage varies with the state of charge and it can range between 3.4 volts on a cell that is empty and 4.2 volts on a fully charged cell. A drain under 2.5 volts will destroy a lithium cell because the formation of dendrites will perforate the cell's membrane and this will create a short circuit. To prevent safely the cell's self-destruction and a potentially hazardous event, each lithium battery pack is equipped with a BMS. BMS is the abbreviation for Battery Management System. It supervises what happens inside the battery pack. It stops the current in case the battery is fully charged or when the battery is being discharged too much during use or when the battery becomes too hot or when the current is too high, which might be caused by a short circuit. Last but not least, the BMS balances voltage between the cells upon charging, so none of them gets overcharged. The 6S designation on the Pulse battery stands for a voltage that corresponds to 6 cells in a serial connection. The 3.7 volts of each cell is summed up, so 6 times 3.7 volts in series corresponds to the battery's nominal voltage of 22.2 volts. But don't forget, this is only a nominal value. A fully charged ePulse battery will deliver 25.2 volts when idling and less than 20 volts when it's empty. The number 2P stands for two cells that are connected in a parallel way. 
This does not affect the voltage, but it doubles the capacity and splits the current through each cell in half. The capacity of the battery, expressed in watt hours or milliampere hours, means how much electrical energy can be stored in it. The sticker of the ePulse battery indicates 4000 milliampere hours. I felt like double checking that and hung two of my ePulse batteries to an electric load. This device converts the stored electric energy into heat and counts it up until the battery is shutting off. The result of this test positively confirmed well what Infento claims about the battery's capacity. I measured 4130 mAh on a brand new battery and 3550 mAh on a battery with 4 years of age. The indicator panel measures the battery's idle current. You can only expect it to deliver meaningful values when the battery is not under load. Values that the panel displays while driving will be misleading. I was curious about the battery indicator's voltage levels for the five different LEDs it shows. So I hung it onto my laboratory power supply unit and varied the voltage. While reducing the voltage, the LEDs went out subsequently as expected. I am writing down here my results. As soon as a battery gets some work to do, its voltage will drop a little bit, like a car that drives slower when you hitch a trailer to it. The voltage of a big battery will drop less with the same load than the voltage of a smaller battery. Batteries are obviously a little bit reluctant to deliver all their energy quickly. This phenomenon is commonly expressed by the so-called internal resistance. The internal resistance of the ePulse battery is close to 0.2 ohms. So if the ePulse motor draws a maximum current of 8.4 amps, the battery's voltage will drop by 0.2 times 8.4 equals 1.7 volt or 7.5% of the battery's nominal voltage. And as we learned at school, voltage has something to do with power. More voltage makes a bulb light brighter and makes a model train go faster. In one of my next videos I will cover how different batteries affect the ePulse power output and how we can maximize its power. So if you didn't already, please subscribe to my channel for not missing upcoming stuff. Alright, that's pretty much it. I hope you also enjoyed my battery crash course. It is much easier to understand electrical interrelationships if you experience them with an interesting example, isn't it? So, thank you for watching. Stay tuned, stay creative!